Hey everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here, and I wanted to talk about the new Netflix show Archive 81, but more importantly, the cameras used in the series and why they might have been chosen. People tell me their stories and I record them with this. First up is the camera used most in the series, the one owned by Melody Pendris. This camera really struck a chord with me because I actually own a later model Sony high e camcorder. Right away I was kind of taken out of the show because it looked too new for a camera in 1994 when the flashbacks in the show take place. So I did some digging and sure enough, her camera is part of the Sony CCD TRV X5 series. More specifically, the Sony Handycam Vision CCD TRV 65. This camera wasn't available until 1998. According to Camcorderpedia, which thankfully for this video is a site that exists, the camcorders in the CCD TRV X5 series all share the common camera in palm design. All are equipped with LCDs and black and white CRT viewfinders that tilt, but don't telescope. The only exception being the CCD TRV 93, which includes a color viewfinder. There's a few reasons I think they chose this despite being in the wrong year. For one, the TRV 65 shoots in both Video 8 and the superior Hi8 format. To keep it simple, Hi8 had more magnetic material that could store more information, resulting in a better looking video. Although it's pretty clear most of the footage shot on this camera is actually a modern camera with a VHS filter over it. Trust me, I shot on Hi8 tapes and they never looked this good. I think the main reason for the change is the LCD monitor. If you look at a Sony camcorder that actually came out in 1994, like the FX 330, You'll see it use the viewfinder. There are plenty of times where Melody needs to record and also be aware of her surroundings. And if she constantly had one eye closed and a camera over her face, she'd probably have no idea that an interdimensional demon monster was lurking behind her. There are also scenes where she needed to show people something on the tape and have them hear what was being played. As mentioned, the FX 330 didn't have a screen, but it also didn't have a speaker, meaning Melody would have to constantly be hooking up this thing to a TV every time she wanted to show people something. That's not to say there weren't cameras with LCD screens at that time. I did some research and saw they existed as early as 1992, but more interesting is the fact that Sony actually did sell a Hi8 Handycam in 94 with an LCD display called the SC5. Just looking at this thing, it seems to have a terribly small lens, and after watching a person on YouTube using this model, it's clear the onboard mic is garbage. You also notice that as I'm squeezing this camera, you can hear a lot of creaking also, I don't think this model was pretty popular, so the audience might have been confused to see a camera that didn't match their memories of what an early 90s camcorder looked like, even though it was more accurate. I make movies too. Next up is Jess's camera. This one was way easier to research because the show actually tells you what it is. PXL 2000. It's only on the market for about a year. They shoot on audio cassettes. Apparently, the camera was too expensive for its target child demographic, but it did become popular again in the 90s for amateur filmmakers. Even today, people mod them and whatnot. Archive 81 isn't even the first 90s throwback to use them. Jake Gyllenhaal uses a PXL 2000 in the film Love and Other Drugs, which takes place in 1996. So unlike Melody's future camera, this one is more accurate. Next up is Dan's predecessor, Thomas's camera. Looks like he's rocking the Canon PowerShot A620. It records in beautiful 640 by 480p and a 4x3 aspect ratio. This camera brings into question the timeline between Thomas and Dan. The PowerShot A620 was released in 2005. On Canon's website, you can find manuals relating to the camera, and the last one came out in 2010. and was more about how to hook it up to a computer and use its browser. I would think by 2010, a guy working in his field would have a better camera or even be using his phone by that point. I think the stuff with Dan takes place in 2022, so it looks like it took Virgil more than a few years to replace Thomas. It's working. He's with us. Imagine what we might see with a motion picture camera. 
Finally, we have the 35 millimeter camera that the Colt was using in the 1920s. To the best of my knowledge, and because of the year episode seven mostly takes place, I believe the camera used by the Colt is a Mitchell standard 35 millimeter camera. It looks like it has the same four lens turret and map box on rails mounted to the front of the camera. It was also released in 1920, which means it would have been available to the Colt in 1924. So there we go. Those are all the cameras I could identify. Some are more accurate to their setting than others, but all of them actually existed. If there were any cameras I missed, let me know. I was gonna do the security cameras used by Virgil, but to be honest, I only got a glimpse of them, and I don't know enough about security cameras to even guess what they are. Also, if you're new here, please subscribe and check out our podcast where we talk about movies from the VHS era. I think you'll like it. And if you're a returning subscriber, let me know what you think of this format and if you'd like more videos like it.